Hey, my name is Dr. Brendan McCarthy. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Protea Medical Center in Chandler, Arizona. Thank you so much for tuning into my podcast. Today we're doing a QA. and a It's one of the things I love. You know, there's a couple of things I love about running this podcast. One of them is your questions because it gives me a chance to, you know, communicate with you and, and, and understand, you know, where people are and, and, and um, to make my podcast a little bit more useful to people. Your feedback really helps do that. It really directs us. My, my producer and I, you know, Justin and I really spent a lot of time looking at these things and, and it really does move me. You know, some of your stories I share with the other doctors that I work with and they're there. Thank you for that. Your vulnerability in sharing these things. And, and it's just, it moves me. It's, it's, it's important. And then the other thing I love is when someone's writing and they're like, say on Instagram, they, they put in their comments, like what they've been going through and another woman will key in underneath it and just give her support. I've said that before on a previous podcast. I just want to say it again. It's very humbling for me as a physician to be a part of that. And I am so thankful to be a part of that and create a space that that can happen. And, um, yeah, just put yourself in my shoes. Imagine you did that and you imagine you're part of that and imagine how thankful you would be to, 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 to be there because I know that that woman reading this other woman's support, I know how much that means to her. And so it's just, I'd say that community that's being created on this, this um, Instagram um, has been uh, beautiful. So I, it means a lot to me. So this one question was sent to me and I'm going to read it. I had a hysterectomy for cervical cancer. My doctor prescribed me Premarin conjugated estrogen. Uh, but then I found out on Premarin's website that women who've had it, who've had cervical cancer should not take Premarin. Uh, why would my doctor prescribe this? I have stopped taking anything, but my hot flashes are now preventing me from sleeping properly again. It is so confusing. Yep. You're right. It is confusing. God, it's confusing. And you're you're valid. Cervical cancer, almost always, not everyone, but almost always, is due to HPV, human papillomavirus. That is the most common cause of it, and that trigger to to cancer is not hormone related. The only time there may be some hormone component to this is if uh, the woman who has it. Uh, in utero, her mother took diethyl still best. Sorry, their mother took diethyl still bestrol. I never pronounced this right. I read it correctly. I know exactly what it is when I read it. Diethyl still bestrol, which increases the risks for cervical cancer that is not HPV associated. Okay, and there's very few people who have that nowadays. Diethyl still bestrol uh, uh, exposure in utero. So, so if you're not exposed to diethyl still bestrol as a child uh, in utero, rather and your HPV was what triggered your cervical cancer, it's not hormone related. And since it's not hormone related, it is not contraindicated to use hormone replacement therapy. In this, the description of the video, I'll put the citations because you should not ever just listen to me for anything like this. I am just a person on the internet speaking. I'm a physician, yes, and I'm licensed in the state of Arizona, absolutely. And I prescribe and perform surgery. I am a doctor, I perform, but I'm a person on the internet. Don't just trust me, please. Making decisions like this, it is so important that you are educated and that you are empowered with these decisions and you feel supported, not just by someone speaking, but by fact that you can cite. You know, um, the studies that are in here, Climacteric publishes in 2021, um, uh, hormone replacement therapy and cervical cancer, a systemic review of the literature. And they found that there's absolutely no reason not to use estrogen replacement therapy uh, in women who have cervical cancer secondary to HPV. There's none. There's no contraindication with that. I want you to know that that's in that journal. And then also uh, it was published in the uh, uh, gynecological oncology publishes in 2020 also. And they said uh, hormone therapy in women with gynecologic cancers and women at high risk for developing gynecological cancer. But basically they're saying they're the same thing is that, you know, if this is not an estrogen receptor active hormone, which would be, excuse me, it's estrogen receptor active cancer, is not contraindicated to use estrogen. If this is again due to HPV, now why would you see on some websites and even on the PDR physician's desk reference them saying cervical cancer you shouldn't use Premarin? Why are they saying that? When the PDR wrote that, 
you can actually read the physician's desk reference. They didn't cite it. <laughs> they didn't cite why they said you shouldn't use Premarin. They just said it randomly, which is frustrating because whenever you make a statement like that and something is important like the physician's desk, ref desk reference, they should cite why they're saying that so that we can look at it and understand why they're saying it and we can have an understanding. But since they didn't do it, we don't. I can tell you the bulk of the literature out there says the same thing I'm saying right now. It's not contraindicated. With that said, would I ever prescribe Premarin to someone? No, not in a million trillion years, no. Premarin is the one that's more associated with, that's, that comes from horse urine. This is not a human estrogen. So when you're taking that, you increase the risk for cancer in your body because that's what Premarin is. It's a synthetic. It's not a human-derived hormone. It's an animal-derived hormone. This is not human. It's horse. So when you're using a horse estrogen in your body, it could misfire and, and the, the structure of that hormone is not 100% the same as the estradiol, which is what you make, and it could cause a misfire and you could just mistranscribe in the gene and it's just all of a sudden now you're going down that cancer pathway. That's in the literature. So Premarin is a pro-cancer agent. So yeah, I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't use it. Estradiol, much better. Estradiol is much better and it's available and insurance covers it and you can use a patch. So now, Again, you read my podcast, you, see, you listen to the podcast, you, 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 you uh, um, look at the Instagram, you'll hear me just going off on topical estrogen. I'm going to keep going off on it. Don't use topical estradiol. There's patches you can do. Put the patch on. Put the patch on. The patch won't spread to your partner. The patch will keep the estrogen into your body. Estrogen going through your tissue, through your skin, doesn't bioconvert into estrone as it would if you took it orally. So if you're going to do estrogen, you're going to do a patch and you're going to do estradiol and you do that with your physician. And you're going to look in this, the description of this video and see my citations and you're going to understand why I'm thinking this is not a bad thing. But again, bring it to your doctor and they're the ones you and him or her make that final decision as to whether you're going to do that or not. But I just wanted you to know in the literature, estradiol is not contraindicated. What if it is contraindicated for you? and you're still having hot flashes, what do you do? Testosterone replacement therapy is a good therapy to use in those cases. That's when you'll start using testosterone at low dose. That does treat hot flashes. That does treat night sweats. That is pretty amazing. So we'll use that, again, in a feminine dosing. And that's another therapy you can do if you, estrogen is contraindicated completely due to some estrogen receptor activity with that cervical cancer that you had. I hope that helps. Remember, your questions mean a lot to me. It helps me drive the direction of the podcast, and my podcast is here to be of service to you. So thank you again for tuning in, and thank you for submitting this question. And uh, I look forward to talking to you guys again. Take care.